Hey, what's up everybody? Um, Steve asked me to do the B12 shot for this month's intermediate fly time box. Excited to show you guys this fly. Um, we'll jump right into it. The B12 shot's a fly that I came up with about two years ago. I've been fishing it quite a lot. It's been a really successful fly. I use it Euro nymphing. I've also used it traditional nymphing under an indicator. Um, both work well, obviously with the jig hook here. Um, it rides hook point up, so less likely to get snags. And with this tungsten bead here, it sinks down really fast and gets down onto the bottom fairly quickly. So I've got a size 10 orients and jig hook in the vise with a four millimeter slotted tungsten bead. In a, it's a copper colored bead. So um, just to start off here, uh, make sure when you put your bead on, obviously small hole goes on first, just as you would any other bead. It does have the slot, uh, if you can see that there. Um, you want your bead to sit down right on top of the eye like that. You don't want it back like this where it's going to have that gap. So make sure it's sitting down right on top of the eye. And you can adjust the weight to whatever you need. So if you need to downsize the bead, you can. Um, I'm going to put some lead wraps here behind the bead just to help secure that in. And I just usually do four or five wraps. And again, you can adjust that for depth of the river that you fish in your hometown waters or one you frequent a lot. So I just try to push that up snug against the bead. And I'll come in here and I'll just break that off with my fingernail here, just close to the hook shank. Just tuck any tag end you have, just try to mash that down the best you can. Okay, thread we're using, UTC70 in um, fluorescent orange. So pretty bright colored thread. We'll use this as a hot spot as we get to the end of the fly. I'm just going to start this behind this wire. And I'm going to build up a little thread dam right behind the wire. This will help secure the lead and that bead in place so it's not going to slide around on you. You'll notice that I'm going to do a little bit of a taper. And there's a reason for that when we get to our dubbing. We want this body to taper just a little bit. Snip off that thread. Tie in our tail material. This is Globe, Glow Bright Floss. And this is in flame orange is the color. So I'm just going to cut off a strand. It's going to be about three to four inches long. I'm going to loop it together. So I've got a loop here. And then on the other end, I've always got my tag ends. I'm just going to tie these tag ends out the back. Lay that right on top of the hook shank. You want it on top. You don't want it rolling over to the side. So adjust it if it tries to roll on you. And we'll wrap this up just to behind our wire or our lead. Then I'll fold the loop end back. Again, right on top. We want them to be parallel with each other. The reason for that is if you have one of these sides that ends up on the side, it's going to flirt out a little bit more. So we just try to keep them right on top. Then I'm going to come in here and I'll trim this tail. I want it to be just beyond the bend of the hook. So you can see that it's not too far back. Um, I like that. Just, it's a nice little hot spot there. The fish pick up on that UV or that fluorescent color there. Now we're going to tie in our ribbing. The ribbing is Vivas Body Quill. Again, we're going with our orange theme. And I'll just snip off. Again, you don't need very much. We're only going to do three or four wraps of this, so enough to give you that many wraps. So I'll secure that on just to the side of the hook shank there. And then I'll try to make sure that I'm tapering my thread body here. So I'll just give it a couple wraps. We'll wrap back to where our tail's at. Leave, their, leave our body quill, our rib, hanging out the back here and we're going to use some dubbing now to dub the body. And for the dubbing color, um, this is Hair's Ear Cinnamon Dubbing. And we don't need very much, we just need enough to be able to make a nice smooth taper on the body of this fly. So I'm going to go ahead and roll that onto my thread. And I want to make a pretty tight rope, I don't want it to be really fuzzy at this point. So I'll try to really tighten that rope in and as with dubbing more is less so if you need to add more it's easier to go back and add more than it is to take some off so 
I'll just go ahead and wrap that forward. Now you kind of see how I've got built that taper. I want a slight taper there to make kind of a little plump body on this fly. And I want to end my dubbing with a little bit of a gap behind the bead. I'm not, there's not much of a gap if you can see that in the camera. Um, basically just enough for another wrap of dubbing is all. So I want, I'm going to leave that there just so I can wrap my, um, my body quill now and then we'll do our fox squirrel dubbing to finish off the collar of this fly. So you don't want to crowd the, the bead on this one. So we're going to wrap our body quill over the top and away from us. Should get about three to four wraps. Just make sure they're nice and symmetrical. Finish that off right here behind the bead. Trim that away. All right, now here's what I think really makes the fly. Um, fox squirrel dubbing, natural fiber. There's no synthetic in it at all. It moves really well. Um, you can see there it's all straight off of a fox squirrel tail. Uh, you can, the should have enough here that we send you that you can tie up a bunch of these and practice with this. It's a little quirky to work with if you have never worked with it before. If you have dubbing wax, this will help to hold it on. But for those of you who don't, I'm going to go ahead and use uh, without dubbing wax. Zoom out here a little bit so you can see. But I'm just going to lay my fox roll dubbing. I have it pinched between my, my thumb and my middle finger. And I'm just going to put it right up on top of the thread. And I'm just going to roll that as tight as I can. And you'll lose a little bit of it just because it's a pretty coarse dubbing. And that's okay. That's why I grab a little bit more than needed and it's pretty easy to take off too so I probably have a little bit too much there so I'm actually going to pick some away so if you can kind of see that in our in the camera there I don't have a ton we're going to make a nice little collar with this dubbing pick up just a little bit more okay now when I wrap this I want to wrap right on top of the next strap I don't want to advance forward I'm just wrapping on top of each wrap there so once I have all that dubbing on I'm going to go ahead and put my my bob and my thread right behind the bead. I'm going to let that bead basically roll my thread down behind itself. And now before I build up the collar, the hot spot on this fly, I'm going to brush this dubbing out a little bit. You know, some of it will pick away and that's okay. I don't need a big thick body of this. So we're going to come in here with our little velcro brush and I'm actually going to pick it forward. And the reason I start brushing it now is because we're going to have a nice little thread hot spot and I don't want that velcro to grab the thread and make it start to to splay and and fall apart so I'm just gonna brush this forward now when I'm ready I'm gonna go ahead and pull everything back and I'm gonna start to build my collar and you can kinda of see that already as it's sinking down in behind the bead and in front of the fox squirrel this will help lock the fox squirrel in place and you just want to build a nice tight collar there. Should be nice and smooth. Should be wrapping forward almost like you're trying to climb the bead but we're not going to wrap over the bead obviously. So once I have a nice little collar there, a little hot spot, we're done with the fly. We can whip finish now. And I think these, the fox squirrel and the little hot spot collar are really what I think make this fly um, unique. I think it's a really good fly. I, I made this fly with the intention of kind of imitating an October caddis. And so when this fly gets wet, this fox squirrel casing will kind of come back around it. And all you really see is kind of the translucent um, part of that fox squirrel will show through the dubbing there, your bright tail and then your bright collar. Makes for a pretty good fly, um, regardless of whether you're Euro nymphing or just traditional nymphing. I hope this uh, works for you. Let us know how you do with it. Love to see some pictures. Uh, if you have any questions, let Steve or I know. Thanks, guys.